Muslim forces cross that narrow portion of the Mediterranean that separates North Africa from Spain and overthrew the various kingdoms that had sprung up there in the wake of the Roman Empire's collapse. This expansion was decisively halted by Christian forces under the command of Charles Martel, the grandfather of Charlemagne, at the Battle of Tours in 732. Muslim power in Europe was now confined to Spain, where they established a caliphate centered at the city of Cordoba. A caliphate is a form of government that's obviously headed by a caliph. A caliph is an individual who is believed has authority to rule as a sort of successor to Muhammad. One could look at a caliph as a sort of Islamic pope, but the office and the line of succession are not nearly as defined as our papal line of succession in St. Peter. For this reason, there was, at any given time, a number of competing caliphates existing simultaneously. ISIS has stated not that its aim is to establish a caliphate, but that it is a caliphate, and it is fighting to expand its territory. Their self-proclaimed caliph is an Iraqi man named Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, who actually holds a PhD in Islamic studies. They claim that since the caliphate has been established, they are obligated to enact the punishments found in the Quran for various crimes, which include the stonings, beheadings, and crucifixions for which ISIS has become famous, infamous. The Caliphate at Cordoba was coming into conflict with nation Christian kingdoms in the north of Spain by the end of the 11th century. At the same time, crusaders were departing Europe to liberate the Holy Land. The, this conflict eventually evolved into what's known as the Reconquista, an effort to reclaim Spain as a Christian land. The Muslims gradually lost territory over the next four centuries, and in 1491, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella brought the Reconquista to a victorious end with the conquest of Granada, the last Muslim stronghold in Spain. The next year, this final victory allowed the Catholic monarchs, as they were called, to focus on other pursuits. The next year, in 1492, they agreed to finance the voyage of a certain Genoese sailor named Christopher Columbus to find a new trade route to India by sailing west. As we all know, Columbus did not find India, but instead discovered a new world, which Spain quickly set about colonizing. The most important of these colonies was New Spain, which is known today as Mexico. The Spanish who conquered the territory under Hernan Cortes in 1521 discovered that the native Aztec Empire practiced barbarous human sacrifice on a level that makes the violence of ISIS rather pale in comparison. The Franciscan missionaries who accompanied the conquistadores had an extremely difficult time converting the Aztecs, no doubt due in a large part to the oppressive measures inflict inflicted by the natives on the, by the conquerors. This changed in 1531, 40 years after the defeat of Muslim forces in Spain. An Aztec convert named Juan Diego received an apparition of Our Lady on a hill named Tepeyac. When the Bishop Juan de Zumadaga requested a sign confirming the authenticity of the apparitions, Juan Diego returned with Castilian roses and the now famous miraculous image of Our Lady of Guadalupe upon his tilma, which many of you are familiar with because there's a big reproduction of it in our church. The image is full of imagery that had great importance to the Aztecs and helped lead to a dramatic increase in conversions. However, Our Lady never identifies herself with the title of Our Lady of Guadalupe, by which she is now venerated throughout the world. Guadalupe is a location in Spain, which already had a significant devotion to Our Lady. This devotion centered around an image of Our Lady supposedly carved by St. Luke. Guadalupe is located in the Extremadura region of Spain, which fell under Muslim control in 712. The image was hidden for its protection until the area was retaken by Christian forces, at which time Our Lady appeared to reveal the location of the image. At a shrine built at the site, which eventually grew into an important monastery, Our Lady had spoken to Juan in the native Aztec language and had given him a name which is translated as one who crushes the serpent's head. Zumaraga did not understand the native Aztec language, and when he heard the name given by Juan Diego, it sounded like the Spanish word Guadalupe. It was in the monastery of Guadalupe that Ferdinand and Isabella signed the documents authorizing the voyage of Columbus. Like
like the image on the tilma, the statue is dark. And Zumarga, who would have been familiar with the shrine, easily made the identification. The Aztec god Quetzalcoatl was a feathered serpent who was represented by the moon. For this reason, Our Lady, she who crushes the serpent, is represented in the tilma standing on a crescent moon. I think it is especially interesting, given the backstory of Our Lady of Guadalupe that we have just explored, that the crescent moon is also the symbol of Islam. But more on that later. We now return to 1571 with the Ottoman fleet sailing toward Italy. The king of Spain was now Philip II, who was apparently too busy to deal with the Ottoman threat. Thus, the defense of Christendom <coughs> fell to his half-brother, Don Juan of Austria. In the, again, 40 years since 1531, news of the apparition of Our Lady of Guadalupe had spread throughout the Spanish Empire, and copies of the miraculous image had been made. Don Juan had such a copy and kept it in the cabin of his flagship throughout the Battle of Lepanto. Unlike Philip, Pope St. Pius V understood all too well the danger of an Ottoman invasion and called for the whole Catholic world to pray the rosary for victory. He even issued rosaries to every sailor in the Catholic fleet. While he was praying the rosary for victory in Rome, St. Pius was granted a vision of the victory at the Catholic. In gratitude for the intercession of Our Lady, which the Pope considered critical in achieving victory, St. Pius instituted the Feast of Our Lady of Victory to be commemorated on the day of the battle, October 7th. Two years later, Gregory XIII, the successor of Pius V, changed the name of the feast to Our Lady of the Rosary. And in 1716, Pope Clement IX extended the commemoration to the whole Latin-speaking church. <coughs> The Battle of Lepanto is an example of the powerful nature of our Lord's intercession and sets a precedent for praying the rosary for peace in the face of Islamist expansion. However, to understand the full significance of the Blessed Virgin Mary in this regard, one must take a closer look at the Islamic faith itself. Mary is known as Miriam by the Muslim, and she is an incredibly important figure in Islam. She is the only woman who is mentioned by name in the and the 19th surah, which is more or less a chapter, is named after him. Islam holds Jesus, whom they call Isa, to be the penultimate prophet, second only to Muhammad, and honor Miriam as the most virtuous woman ever. Mosques are even named after her. Miriam even has precedent in Islam over the beloved daughter of Muhammad, who was the only child to give him grandchildren, and whose husband Ali became the first king. She was instrumental in carrying out what she believed to be her father's will after his death in the short time between his death and her own. That daughter's name was Fatima. Because of her prominent place in Islamic history, Fatima has and remains a very common name for Muslim women. One such woman was a Moorish princess who lived in a portion of the Cordoba Caliphate that included modern day Portugal. This princess is believed to have married a Christian nobleman and converted to Catholicism. The village located in the region in which she lived was named after her, and it was in a field outside this village that Our Lady appeared to three shepherd children in 1917. In her apparitions at Fatima, Our Lady used the title of Our Lady of the Rosary and urged frequent recitation of the rosary to combat the evils that would swiftly befall the world in the 20th century. Thus, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is the most revered woman in Islam, appeared in an area that had once been controlled by Muslims and was named after the second most revered woman in Islam under the title of Our Lady of the Rosary, which is forever inextricably linked with a momentous victory that haunted, halted Muslim expansion for centuries. I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't think God works 